fascination with the past is part of what it means to be civilized. Most tree farmers can tell you the entire history of their property. Many of these forests contain artifacts that in fact preserve a piece of that history. There is much of the past to be found on Oregon tree farms. Some of the history that's here is there has been mining done here clear back in the 1800s. Um, they logged here, there were springboard stumps. There is um, an old cabin on the property that was here when the homesteaders originally came here, the people who owned the place back in 1800, 1900. Our involvement started in 1941. My grandfather was, he ran a sawmill. We ran the sawmill until they outlawed wing burners in the early 70s. This is just a few of our collection of old chainsaws here. These particular ones on top are McCulloch 99s, and you can see they have uh, stingers on the end of it, so it was two-man operated power saws. We also have an auger that fits on those. We have some additional home lights and a few other saws in our collection of old chainsaws. We also have uh, a uh, Oregon historic site uh, within the tree farm and along Denny Creek uh, where Kit Carson and John C. Fremont were camped in 1846 and uh, were attacked by Indians. They did whatever it took to stay alive and that's quite frankly what they did. Uh, the trees, a lot of times the trees were simply in the way. You can't eat them, you can only burn so much of it uh, and you, um, you, know, you build your house out of it but after that it's in the way because you needed something to eat. Uh, in order to get something to eat, you had to get those dang trees out of the way. And they did. The old growth trees, a lot of them uh, were cut, sold for firewood in Portland, or a lot of them were uh, simply burnt. The hillsides were burnt off so that they could grow grass or a crop of some sort to subside on. Uh, and it's gone through, the Paramount area has gone through a lot of different crops over the years. Um, hops and, and plums and prunes, Hey, you name it, they tried everything. But the trees stayed, <laughs> or a lot of them did, and now they're the most valuable crop. One of the most unique features we think of this farm is the cemetery up on the hill that has Andrew Wiley and several of his family members buried in it. And he has a significant history. We've reviewed that history with some of our historians in Sweet Home as part of this tree farm tour. Uh, initially, he built the Sandy Am Wagon Road for about $1,495, and it was a toll road. This is his original homestead. And this is the end of the east switchback which was the OC&E, Oregon, California and Eastern Railroad. It was a logging railroad for a warehouser company in Klamath Falls. Um, and the trains, it was a double, double switchback to get over what they call Switchback Hill now. The other option was to tunnel through and they decided that was too expensive when they built the railroad in the early 1900s. So they built this double double switchback, which is fairly unique. There isn't very many of them in the U.S. And this is the end of what they call the east switchback. A whole tr logging train could back in here and then start pulling forward to go over the, the switches. And sometimes if the train was going to Klamath Falls, the caboose would be here. And if the train was going out into the woods to pick up another load, the engine would be here. And then reverse direction. Uh, and it's also, why it's a gravel pit, they developed it to uh, uh, make ballast for the railroad. <laughs> 